by popular demand, here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup, where we have gathered some of our favorite videos around a fabsome theme. Since Valentine's Day is just around the corner, we have some crafts for you. From sugar cookies to chocolate, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. On the Frog Blog, Little Froggy and I made last minute Valentine's Day cards. Only it was turned into a challenge and there was a time limit. So I felt totally rushed. In the video, I made a pop out bed. Now we are going to take our time and try it again. Using two pieces of white poster board, our poster board measures 22 inches by 28 inches. Scrapbook paper, an X-Acto knife, and a ruler. And remember to always have adult supervision when working with sharp objects. And glue. I start by folding my poster board in half, and then in half again, open it completely, cut on the center fold up to the center to make our basic folding room. I know this can be a little hard to see since it is a white poster board on a white background. So I'm going to show it again using a piece of colored paper. First fold it in half, then fold it in half again, open it up, cut down the fold to the center to make our basic folding doll room. Now you can remove one of the floors. However, I find that it helps to give the walls a little more support. So all I am going to do is just trim the excess that hangs over on one side. Then place the shorter floor underneath to give it a cleaner edge. And we are about to make the fold out bed and I want to make sure there is enough space at the bottom. We can just pretend like this is a partial doorway into another room. Now let's open up the room and lay it flat. Decide on the height of the bed. For our 10 to 12 inch dolls, I'm going to use two and a half inches. But for the demonstration, I am going to use just one inch. Starting at the crease in the paper, measure up and draw a line for the height of the bed. Move the ruler over for the width and make a mark. Decide on the length of the bed and this should be at least the same length as the doll. Starting at the top of the line drawn, draw a line to the needed length. Draw a line across the bottom. Add another rectangle to the bottom that is the same size as the rectangle over the crease. Use an X-Acto knife and cut only the lines going down the sides so it can be lifted up. Make a crease at the top, at the end of the bed, and at the bottom. Test it out to make sure everything can lay flat for the pop-out bed. Repeat to make a smaller one for a side table or nightstand. Take a second poster board or a piece of paper. Line up the edges and glue it to the back wall. Allow the glue to dry completely before continuing so you don't accidentally glue down the pop-up bed. Carefully apply glue to the back, then glue it in place. Trim off the excess. And I trimmed just a little extra down the side to make sure that it is easy to close. Refold on the lines to make the basic room. Now I am going to repeat all of these steps onto my poster board and I just finished cutting out the bed and nightstand. I want the furniture to have a wood grain finish. So on the outer poster I marked the areas that need to be covered, cover them with scrapbook paper, then glue the two pieces of poster board together just as before to make the bed nightstand and walls. I want the bed to be able to hold the weight of my doll so I need to give it more support. So I take the leftover poster board, cut two rectangles the same size as the top of the bed, stack and glue them together, then glue them onto the bed. Glue extra poster board to the front of the nightstand too, making sure to leave a little space before the bends. Cover the bed and nightstand with scrapbook paper, Cut another piece of poster board, cover it, glue it above the bed for the headboard. To make a pop-out bed and nightstand that can easily fold down for easy storage. Now let's decorate the room. On the other wall, use a ruler to lightly draw lines. Then I use an X-Acto knife to cut on the lines drawn. I made several rectangles with little spaces in between. So when I remove the cutouts to make a window, use paper to frame the window. 
To define the window, I added a metallic trim around the headboard, used paper for baseboards on the bottom of the walls, I make bedding from our doll tumbler room video, make a few throw pillows for a little touch of color, use a cut piece of faux fur as a throw at the bottom of the bed, take an empty glitter container, after cleaning it out, add some artificial plants, set it on the nightstand, along with one of our printable books to make a simple, elegant doll room. And when playtime is over, I store the accessories in a plastic bag and fold up the room until next time. For this project, I like to use white poster board because colored poster board can start to wear at the seams. The bed is strong enough to support the weight of the doll. However, since this is a paper craft, make sure to handle it with care. And you're done. Happy crafting! making sweets and treats for my dolls. To make cotton candy, I start by writing on a chalkboard with pink chalk. Then I clean it with a cotton ball. Cut a small piece of white paper. Roll it into a thin cone. Use glue to secure the end. Apply glue to the large end and attach your cotton ball. Make a sweetheart vase using a heart-shaped bead, a button, and some small silk flowers. Glue the bead to the button, and then insert your flowers. Cut and paint round toothpicks to look like peppermint sticks. Wrap beads in plastic wrap to look like candy. Apply a small amount of glue to the ends and then twist. And then trim off the excess. I even made some 12 inch doll candy by using seed beads. For lollipops, we've used erasers and toothpicks. Then use nail clippers to clip off the ends. We also use beads and toothpicks and stickers and craft foam. Cut a small piece of scrapbooking paper and fold it in half to make a card. Then trace it on a white piece of computer paper. Extend the lines around it to make a tab on top a tab on bottom, and two small tabs out to the sides. Cut it out. Fold the side tabs in, the short bottom tab up, and glue into place. And now you have an envelope for your card. Wrap a piece of brown craft foam with chrome duct tape or aluminum foil. Trim off the excess. Wrap it with some paper and pull down one edge to look like an open chocolate bar. Cut circles out of craft foam, put a small amount of glue on one of the edges and fold it in half. Write a message on a small piece of paper and slip it inside. Push down the middle to bend it in half. Apply a small amount of glue and push it together. And now you have a fortune cookie. Well, I guess that's it for now. Happy craft! I'm going to make sweet treats for a doll using craft foam, toothpicks, plastic wrap and glue, a hole punch, stirs, beads, and a red pen. 
to make gummy bears, I use round beads and hot glue. I glue two beads together, then use dots of hot glue for the nose, ears, arms, and legs. To make rock candy, I use toothpicks, beads, and glue. I cut the tip off of the toothpick, and I begin gluing the beads onto the toothpick until one end is completely covered. Cut colorful stirs to look like peppermint or pixie sticks. I make sweethearts using pastel colored craft foam, a heart hole punch, and a red pen. I punch out heart shapes and then write short messages with the pen. I even use a regular hole punch to make Smarties by gluing them together. Wrap it in a small piece of plastic wrap. I twist and trim the ends. To make licorice candy, I glue together strips of craft foam, then cut it into small pieces. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make sugar cookies for a doll using cornstarch, baking soda, craft paint, chalk pastels, food coloring, glitter, small beads for nail art, Mod Podge or clear glue, water, recycled paperboard, a plastic binder, or clear plastic from packaging, tape, and glue. I start by cutting a thin strip off of the plastic binder, bend it into a circle, then secure with tape or I can use hot glue on a low temperature setting. To make a different shape, I take a strip and I fold it at one end, making a nice crease. Take the other end, lay it in the fold to find the center point. Then I'm gonna push it down to make a crease going the opposite direction. Bend and curl the plastic around the crease, then glue or tape the end in the bottom crease. To make a heart, Fold a strip back and forth accordion style. After making five peaks with a tail end, curve it around, gluing the tail into a corner. To make a star, take a circle, bend it at one end to make an egg shape. For a set of cookie cutters, make them larger or smaller to fit different sized dolls. If I do not wish to use a plastic binder, then clear plastic from packaging is a good substitute. In a microwave safe bowl, mix one part cornstarch, two parts baking soda, and one part water. Mix until creamy, then microwave for about 20 seconds. Stir until cooled, then knead until it is the consistency of Play-Doh, adding small amounts of water if needed. Take a small amount of the dough, storing the extra in an airtight bag. Flatten the dough on a smooth surface, press one of the cookie cutters into the dough, remove it, Carefully pull away the excess, use a butter knife, or cut a piece of the plastic binder to lift it. I can even cut the plastic and bend it into a spatula. Smooth out any raw edges, allow it to air dry, or bake in the oven at 175. Taking an idea from a previous video, we're modifying our cookie sheet by drawing a rectangle, cutting it out, cut three, draw a rim around one of the rectangles, cut it out, Stack and glue the layers. Paint it. I'm brushing a little black around the edges to make it look like it's been used. Using a dry brush technique where I remove a lot of the paint by swishing it around until there's just a tiny bit left and I lightly brush it on over the surface. Allow it to dry. Once they've completely dried out and are cool to the touch, lightly dust them with chalk pastel or makeup. Add more water to leftover dough. Mix until it has the consistency of frosting. Add a drop of food coloring, then continue to mix. Using a paintbrush, I add the mixture to the cookies. 
use glitter for sugar, nail art beads for sprinkles, craft paint for fine details, seal it with Mod Podge, and I just start by dabbing it on the top so that I don't move all the glitter and crystals around. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make a box of chocolates for a doll using scrapbook paper, craft foam, recycled cardboard, glue, pom-poms, beads, buttons, recycled candy wrappers, and other decorative items, and ribbon. I start by cutting heart shapes out of my recycled cardboard. I take two, with one being slightly larger than the other, to use as my patterns. I trace the smaller one onto a piece of craft foam and cut two. I trace the larger heart onto a piece of cardstock and cut two as well. I cut a long strip of cardstock. I take the strip of paper and one of the foam hearts and begin gluing it around the outer edge. Then I glue the foam to the center of the cardstock. I take the other cardstock heart and begin decorating it with ribbon and whatever else I can find, like lace, bows, and buttons. I glue the other foam heart to the back. It is now time to fill my box with candy or something that gives the illusion of candy. Brown beads give a great shine while pom-poms keep it nice and light. Cover random beads in recycled candy wrappers to make chocolate truffles. And that little piece of foam should help to keep the lid in place. Another option would be to take a piece of cardstock, fold it over, trace a heart at the edge of the fold, cut it out, trace the same pattern onto a piece of craft foam, and cut two. I decorate one of the foam hearts. I glue the decorated foam heart to the front of my cardstock and the other foam heart to the back. I trace a smaller heart onto a piece of cardstock, cut it out, and glue it to the inside. Cut small pieces of cardstock and glue them inside to be the chocolates. Make it even simpler by cutting out two foam hearts, decorate one, and then glue them together to make a closed box of chocolates. And you're done. Happy crafting! joining us for this my froggy stuff mashup let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below like comment share and subscribe follow us on instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and we will see you next time bye